This is Mark Marshall with Anatomy of Tone. In this video, I want to talk about using shape and contour to help tell the story of your improvisation or solo that you're performing or recording in the moment. This is something I do take into consideration even when I'm making something up on the spot, because even though I'm creating things in the moment, I'm still trying to tie into what is the storyline I'm trying to say? What's the what's the plot? What's the payoff? What's the ending like? In order to do that, you have to set up a bit of a, a game plan, a, a little bit at least. And what I mean by this is, if we just had a guitar solo or piano solo, any instrument for this example, and the notes were just going up and then down, and then up and then down, and then up and then down, by the third time that happens, the listener gets to a point where, okay, yeah, I'm I know what's going to happen now. They might start to zone out. They're not being surprised. Imagine if you're on a roller coaster and a roller coaster just had up and down exactly at the same positions. The whole ride was like that. You'd get kind of bored. One of the things that's exciting about a roller coaster is that you get surprised by the turns and the, the dips and the speed and there's various elements that create surprise. We need a little bit of this when we're developing an improvisation or trying to compose. And a lot of composers actually use this in their process while composing. They do think about shape. There's actually books written about this in the classical realm where they discuss this exact topic. I want to apply it to rock music and pop music as well and think about this in the ways that we can use it to create some elements of surprise for the listeners so that they don't feel like they already know what's going to happen or if they do you throw them a little bit of a curveball. I'm going to start this out by using just arpeggios. I'm going to use some very popular chord cycles like two five ones and six two five ones because these are just in every genre of music you'll find these chord cycles and I'm going to use it in the key of C. I like to use key of C for all my examples said it in every one of my videos, but if you can work it out in the key of C, it'll become much easier to then transpose it to other key signatures. I wouldn't encourage you to jump to the key of E flat or A flat too soon, although I think it's incredibly important to work out in those key signatures. Once you get a great grasp on the concept, by all means, go and work through all the key signatures. But at first, let's always start with our home base of the C major scale. We're going to look at some notation that I wrote out here on paper. And the first example, you're going to see that at the top of the page, I wrote four measures. Uh, and I just have arrows in them. The first arrow is going up, second arrow is down, the third arrow is up, and the fourth arrow is up. So it's up, down, up, up. Now it's not up, down, up, down. So it's two ups in the row for the last two bars that feel like a, a steady climb. Right? I'm using that to maybe push out of a guitar solo. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, boom, we're out. And before that, I want to have a little bit more movement just to give it some peaks and valleys. Below that, I create some arpeggios. You're going to see D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. Example 1. I'm going to walk up, just going to pick some random positions for this. And the guitar is tricky because there's often more than one way we could play something. So I'm just going to sight read this and see how I find my way through it. But now we're moving our direction up, right? Now I'm going to move down. Now I'm going to move up. I was following the up, down, up, up pattern. We go D, F, A, C, and then B, G, F, D, and then E, G, B, C, and then E, G, B, C. You'll notice I voice led them, so meaning the last note I got to in D minor 7, when I'm about to switch to G7, I found the closest note in G7 to move to. I tried to keep it by step if possible. In voice leading, you can move up to about a third before it's really not considered a great voice leading. Step is the best bet, but if you need to, a third can work. I'm going to create an eight bar solo now as opposed to a four bar solo. I'm going to vary each four bars. So the first four bars are going to be down, up, down, down. The second four bars are going to be up, down, down, up. I just randomly pick these directions for now. And obviously, while you're composing or improvising, you want to think a little bit more about the music that you're playing, who you're playing with, what the dynamics are, what the mood of the song is. 
for ex exercise purpose, I just picked some directions, which I encourage you to do while you're getting a grasp on this concept. At first, it's very analytical because we really need to understand the process and the philosophy. And we're being very almost mechanical about the way we're working our way through these arpeggios. Once you get a good grasp on the concepts, then you'll start applying them more musically. And it's just a thing that happens with music theory. Often when you're learning music theory, your first examples or first attempts at making music with them don't turn out to be your best because you're still learning. Sometimes you have some fun, happy accidents that happen and you end up with something really amazing. But don't be discouraged if the music you're making with these concepts at first aren't blowing you away. It takes some time to really get them in embedded in your brain so that you can use them in a more musical way. So at first, I'm just arbitrarily picking some different directions to mix it up and make sure that I'm not making any too many moves in one direction. So the takeaways are you should be thinking about how the direction affects your storyline. Is it a piece that's supposed to build with excitement and anticipation? Is it a piece that's dropping down and you're trying to go down to a lower point when you come out of your guitar solo? Don't just think dynamics or pitches. Think shape and direction can also help convey these expressions. We often think subconsciously that lines moving up have a sense of excitement to them. Your homework would be to start out with a four bar progression Pick something simple. If we're working on a new concept, try to make all the other elements that we're using in our practice for that super simple. We don't want to have to think about them. We don't want to think too much about rhythm or harmony too much. Right now, we want to think about contour. So pick a chord progression that you know really well and then write out the arrows or the shapes for four bars. And then write in the notes from the arpeggios following the direction of the arrows that you wrote. Now you can expand that to eight bars and see how that plays out maybe with a song that you're working on and soloing in. I would just start with the arpeggios before we move on to moving between scale degrees or thinking about anything fancy like modal interchange with the notes or the, that we're playing over the chord. Start simple and branch out from there. Reach out and let me know if you have any questions. I hope this has provoked some thought for you when it comes to conveying your motion with improvisations and composition and how such a simple thing as direction can have an impact on the way that that expression is being received. You can check out my webpage, my blog, anatomyofguitartone.com, where I do have other music theory tips as well as a lot of reviews on pedals. I just recently did the Red Panda Tensor pedal, which is a really unique reverse tape effect delay pedal. I've also done pedals on the Solo Dallas Storm pedal and Seeker Electronics MK1 Fuzz, as well as a bunch of other really cool pedals. So anatomyofguitartone.com. I also have a podcast called Anatomy of Tone that's available on all podcast outlets. In this podcast, I do a variety of discussions on topics such as composition, music theory, music advice, interviews with musicians and music therapists and product designers. I review pedals, talk about um, compositional techniques, orchestration techniques, how to get sounds using synthesizers, guitars, mixing and production. It's just an overview of, of everything that I'm involved in my life and musically, and I'm sharing a lot of tips and ideas. So if you look up Anatomy of Tone, I'm also available for private guitar lessons. If you happen to be looking to get a lot deeper into any of these concepts, I specialize in helping intermediate to advanced guitar players. And if you feel like you're hitting a wall and you've been playing a long time and you just can't get to that next stage, hit me up. We'll chat and see what we can work on together. You can contact me at anatomyofguitartone.com. Also, please hit the subscribe button if you're digging these videos. I plan to release many more. Until next time.